Hey everybody, Deathbed here. Um, again, I'm in my office with kind of with my my ceiling light lighting everything, so my eyes are kind of in shadow. Sorry about that. I'm here with another book review, and today I'm going to be talking about this book by Peter A. I'm, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name because I can think of like at least six different possible ways to pronounce it, and I don't want to mess it up. But the name of the book is called uh, Chinese Martial Arts from Antiquity to the 21st Century. So here's the full cover. And uh, there's the title there, and the author. As the title of the book would indicate, it is a historical look at Chinese martial arts. And it is a non-fiction book, so if you're looking for an action-packed novel, this is not the book for you. However, if you're interested in Chinese history, Chinese culture, martial arts, wuxia novels, Chinese fantasy novels, then this is really an amazing book. I couldn't recommend it more. I had a lot of fun reading it. And essentially, yeah, it's basically just a historical and I'll use the word scholarly because it absolutely is scholarly. Uh, if you look in the back, there are pages, um, many, many pages of uh, references. That having been said, it's not dry, it's not boring, it's actually pretty well pretty well paced, fast paced and interesting, lots of very cool stories and anecdotes and things you probably never knew. Uh, for example, uh, did you know that the first person ever mentioned in Chinese history as a martial artist is actually a woman? Um, did you know that Confucius was a martial artist? Did you know that the concept of internal and external martial arts was basically invented only a few hundred years ago? There are a lot of very, very interesting stories and facts in this book that I make it really cool. So let me get into some of the pros and then at the end I'll get into some of what I view as the cons. Uh, the, pro, the pros of the book um, are the fact that it will give you a very um, grounded view of Chinese martial arts based on history. There is a lot of stuff in this book that I think even a lot of Chinese people wouldn't know unless they had done a lot of research into martial arts, into the traditional Chinese martial arts. There is a huge amount of fiction and legend and myth and um, basically stuff that is absolutely made up <laughs> that a lot of people, Western and Chinese, both view to be historical facts or at least semi-historical. Uh, it goes through one historical period uh, after another in chronological order starting from way, way back um, in antiquity all the way up to the modern era. So anyway, I'm not going to ramble too much about the positives because definitely it's, it's worth checking out for anybody that's a fan. And let me get into the negatives. There's a few that I, I think could be viewed as negatives. One negative, um, there are some odd language choices in terms of the translation. Incidentally, this author is, I'm pretty sure, uh, fluent or at least speaks and reads Chinese. I believe he's also a martial artist. So I'm pretty sure he's like way smarter than me and probably knows a lot more about everything in terms of Chinese culture and language and history and stuff than I do. Um, however, I do find it odd that he picked some of some things to translate in odd ways. For example, he translates Dao as a sword. Now, I have a whole video about the difference between Chinese swords and sabers in which I refer to the Dao as a saber. He refers to it as a sword and then he refers to the Jian, which is the what I refer to as a sword in that sword and saber video. He refers to it as a long sword. I think it's definitely a valid translation um, to translate Dao and Jian as sword and long sword, but I found it kind of confusing and it, and it I don't know, just it was weird, especially considering that you see Dao translated as saber or other things besides sword so often, and because there's such an important connotation to sword itself, I thought that was kind of weird. And there were some other language things, but you know, whatever, not a not a big deal. Uh, another thing that could potentially be a negative is that for the vast majority of Chinese history, um, starting from very early on up until only what well, I think most of us would consider the more modern dynasties, before then there was very little in terms of what we would think of as martial arts, like those of us who are into kung fu movies and martial arts movies, or even maybe those of us who are into, for example, UFC or something, think of martial arts as hand-to-hand -hand combat, <clears throat> and uh, you know, striking, kicking. But the thing is that that sort of martial art actually wasn't really a major part of um, warfare. So much of the early parts of this book delve into what some people might, I think might not consider to be martial arts. For example, um, archery and uh, riding in chariots 
and those kind of things. So for a big portion of Chinese history, um, things that we might not initially imagine to be martial arts are actually what would be considered martial arts. And so for if you're looking for the history of Kung Fu, then this might not be the book for you. Or at least what I would do, what I would suggest is that you jump into it maybe sort of halfway through or a little bit later. If you're interested in the history of Kung Fu, then start with uh, the Yuan Dynasty or maybe even the Ming Dynasty. To some extent, the Song Dynasty counts. Uh, in my opinion, the Song Dynasty is where the real sort of like martial arts world that many of us who read the fantasy novels envision, that's kind of when that sort of started. And in fact, reading this book um, and reading about the historical realities of that sort of Jianghu martial arts world of wandering fighters really inspired me to want to write a historically accurate Wuxia novel um, take, that, that would take place maybe in the Song Dynasty or something. Uh, it just it's such a cool idea that that sort of martial artist wandering fighter world actually did exist. Um, not like it's portrayed in the movies, obviously. For those of you who are into Chinese fantasy novels, um, Wuxia novels specifically, and to some extent Xianxia novels, but Xianxia novels, the true high fantasy, Chinese high fantasy novels, aren't really grounded in real life martial arts necessarily. But a lot of the Wuxia novels are. This book actually mentions that. It talks about sort of some of the way that that um, sort of fictional martial arts world came to be and how it relates to the actual martial arts world. Oh, right, I forgot one other downside. I, I would put this as a downside. I, uh, you could view it as an upside or a downside. But basically, if you are a huge fan of Kung Fu movies, Usha movies, um, martial arts novels, Usha novels, and that kind of thing, if you have not taken a lot of time to look into the historical accuracy of the way things are portrayed in those novels, this book might ruin your worldview of Chinese martial arts because there has been a huge amount of, um, I wouldn't say necessarily misinformation, but there's been a huge amount of myth and lore injected into um, what we view as traditional Chinese martial arts. And some of that was intentional, some of it was not intentional. Um, one of the absolute biggest ones that is uh, perpetuated even in China and even among most Chinese people is that the Shaolin Temple is like the, 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 the root of all martial arts and that you know, the history of the Shaolin Temple as the, the home of martial arts goes back thousands of years and stuff. And basically, long story short, I'll, I'll spoil this for you, there's very little historical evidence and in fact, almost no historical evidence really to support that idea. It was made, basically made up many years later, or at least historical evidence seems to indicate that it was sort of made up. Um, the Shaolin Temple, like many Buddhist temples um, throughout history, would have had um, and did have a uh, warrior monks or at least people that they had to protect themselves because through much of Chinese history um, temples had to be able to defend themselves from local warlords and stuff. So there's definitely, there was definitely, um, you know, martial artists who were associated with the Shaolin Temple, but the idea that the, Marsh, that the Shaolin Temple is like where martial arts originated and then spread throughout all of China and then the world and stuff, it's just pretty much not true. And there's a lot of very interesting tidbits of information such as that that are spread throughout the book that will definitely change your understanding and view of how martial arts are portrayed in the movies and in the books. So I would, I would view that as a downside or an upside of if you're really if you're really tied to those you know fictional portrayals of the Chinese martial arts world it could be a little bit of a letdown to find out what it's really like. On the other hand if, if you can take those things with a grain of salt then it's actually very cool to see the historical grounding for these things. So again uh, the book is uh, Chinese martial arts from antiquity uh, to the 21st century by Peter A. L. O. R. G. E. Um, and I would definitely highly recommend it. So uh, if you'd like to support my channel, please head over to Patreon. Um, I, uh, my patrons can vote on topics. I got a little bit behind over the past couple weeks because of um, life circumstances, but I plan to pump out more videos going forward. And if you have any suggestions for topics, uh, for books to review, um, or for you know things that you'd like to know about Chinese culture, please feel free to leave a message in the comments. And also, if you've read this book, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you go and read this book because of this review, please come back and let me know what you thought about it. And please do recommend it to anybody that uh, you know who would be interested in a topic like this. So that's it for this video. I'll see you next time. Gao